little different because generally we uh, have an Urdu or Hindi language, but today we have the little portion we have to have it in English because we have some sister from uh, Philippine, so she doesn't understand any part of Urdu or Punjabi or Hindi. So we have a, that portion will be in English. So we will uh, explain to you um, what we're going to do today. And we have a very big testimony from her. And uh, also we have Brother Basharat, who's come uh, from Christ from a long time back from Islam background. Uh, so uh, this is a very, very, very good stream. Uh, before we started, I'm going to tell you about the Balboa Park. Uh, actually, we had a very good Saturday and Sunday. We have a very good conversation with, uh, uh, with a lot of people. And we will put these videos on um, uh, very soon um, on, on the YouTube channel. So please uh, please uh, uh, like our video, share our video, because this is the only way we'll reach the message to the people. Otherwise, uh, we cannot uh, uh, do without you guys. So thanks for helping us out. Please keep praying for us and um, uh, that that's the only way like you say we don't work for money we don't ask for any donation we just do for sake of our uh, God and sake of his kingdom um, like I said I'm a businessman and I don't do for this one for uh, for money uh, so please keep pray for us and please uh, share this videos to everyone uh, before we started I want to tell you about uh, about sister Glenn uh, recently I have a chance to speak to her and she has been for uh, 2014. She was uh, uh, come from Catholic background and con converted to Islam. Uh, but unfortunately, I've been telling people, people they have been converted from uh, Catholicism or any other religion to Islam because the people have been lied to people. Muslim people, Sheikh and Imam, they have been lying to people about the Islam, about the Quran, about the Allah, about Muhammad. So they're all lying. But you know, one day when they know the truth, they will leave the Islam. So this is a time pay back. A lot of people, you know, that they are going back to uh, Christianity. So I have here uh, Brother Nazreen before we start anything. So let's bring Brother Nazreen. Brother yeah, Nazreen. yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome, Tony. Bhai. Sorry, I had. I, th <laughs> I think I kind of removed or something happened. But sorry. Uh, thank you, Tony. Bye. Um, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you. Basharat Bhai is also here. Welcome, Basharat Bhai. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, uh, Tony Bhai, about the Balboa Park. And as you said, you know, you say this to people, that when you say Islam, when you say Islam, then what is Islam about Islam? You have to know this. Because the Sheikh and the Imam are saying this. And without the Sheikh, the Islam is not standing up. Nazifa, thoda saap English mein rakhe taake Sister Glenn will understand what you're saying. And this portion, just the only this portion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So let me add Sister Glenn also to the picture. Let me add her to the stage. So like you said, that without the lies of the Imams or the Sheikhs or the people who do Dawah, Islam cannot stand. And which is a fact. We can see all over the world where the Muslims who, who do Dawa or who share the Islam, they will say that we are inviting you to one God. That is the one thing that say. We are inviting you to one God, come to one God, one God, one God, where in Christianity there are three gods and, you know, which is false and all of this. But this is the lie and the deception of the evil. And we have seen that. So I welcome Sister Glenn. Sister Glenn, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being brave in terms of, you know, joining us live. Uh, I also want to thank uh, our dear brother Basharat, who has been doing a wonderful ministry. Uh, he has his own. You. Okay. Somehow. Nazim Bayu, uh, we can uh, hear you. Uh, yes, Sister Glenn, um, uh, we welcome you and very, I'm very, part of my heart, I'm very happy. At least we try to save the soul. It's all to glory to God. It's nothing to do with us. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I spoke to you and uh, now you know the truth about the Islam and you left the Islam. And I'm very, very happy. You, you were very, very strong Muslim. The sense of you were wearing a hijab and you were praying five times. When I met her first time, so she was wearing hijab, and after I, I explained to her about the Islam, so she right away she uh, removed the 
hijab which is uh, make me so happy because this is a cult which is uh, we don't want to see those people to go to the hell and i'm very happy you left islam and you're not doing any more uh, five time prayers and um, uh, let's uh, let's uh, nazrin bhai are you there so let's bring uh, um, uh, sister sister there hi uh, hello yes sister. yes i'm okay. here sister glenn tell me about, uh, about yourself please go ahead nazrin bhai okay sister glenn glenn go ahead okay um i'm glenn elen i'm glenn and i'm from the philippines yeah and... you was the yeah you speak tagalo and i i believe that uh, sister glenn i just want to ask you that go ahead go ahead go ahead please yes i try to try to keep it so uh, secure do not give uh, your personal information because he uh, it's i told you mentioned you that coming to islam is very easy but leaving yes. islam is uh, you have to shed your blood so be, please keep it um, do not give all the information before okay. you start please could you recite anything you know uh, in last 9 uh, or 10 years okay. being a muslim just recite some brother things. anthony am i audible am yes, i audible my, yes 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 okay yeah. wonderful wonderful yes so sisters recite something in our uh, quran or shahada please so people they know and you have been a muslim and you know islam no you do not uh, don't, don't don't recite the shahada but you can maybe yeah. recite one portion of a quran or some portion so that people should not think that you know we are just lying or you are lying Go ahead, sister. Okay. Um, I say the Surah Al-Ikhlas. Kul sure. Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakul Lahu Kufwan Ahad. Yes. Right. That is Surah 112. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, sister. So, my first question to you would be that: What was your initial background before you? understood or before your family came to know about islam what was your background um i am catholic like pure catholic and um i grow i grow up knowing that there are that there is only one god but in per, uh, three person like uh, god with a uh, holy spirit god the son god the father and the holy spirit and yeah that's all and we go to church every sunday and then after that on the on the next week again for sunday that's how my life is before and uh i used to party and drink yeah like a teen life a teen teenager's life and until i have my kids i i still drink like i don't have time for god yeah So when you were in the catholic background uh, did you actually studied the bible in depth or did you actually try to find out you know what is the core doctrine of uh, the christian faith um in in our house my mom used to before we sleep she used to read some part of the bible so that <clears throat> she said it will be our protection when we sleep So she will uh, read some stories in Matthew, some stories mm-hmm. in Revelation, like that, and so that we will will grow up familiar uh, familiar with the Bible. But uh, I don't really, I don't really like give attention to that. I just wanted mm-hmm. to, to hear it. So just like that. a regular, just like a regular teenager, you were also like, okay, your family is uh, reading the Bible. You were listening to that and, you know, not giving much attention to what is the core doctrines of the, of the scripture, right? Like in a regular teenager. Yes. wonderful wonderful okay sister so my next question to you would be my next question to you would be what happened or what was that incident was first contact when you came to know about islam or that your family came to know about islam um after my mom died i i went to some place in the philippines and then um me and my cousin met he was already a muslim on that time but i am not so he doesn't he did not really introduce islam to me like he just show um i'm i am 
I am like shocked or uh, became shocked about his actions. He is very kind. He always used to share nice things to me. And then he, I saw him praying five times a day. And then I asked him, are you a Muslim or are you really a Muslim now? He said yes. And then he told me that he, he changed his life because he wanted to please God. Like uh, he wanted to please Allah uh, so that when he died, uh, he has something, uh, he has something, uh, like he has a lot of things to bring when he died. And then, and then. Basically, so basically when you saw your cousin's life, you know, all of a sudden he is a Muslim, he is very nice to people, and he is five, praying five times a prayer, and then he is saying to you that, okay, you know, if I die, I will get Jannat of Allah, and that, you know, that is what I am striving for. That kind yeah. of attracted you towards Islam? Um, not really, but I am amazed. And then I ask him, is God, is Allah a pig like that? Uh, no, he's the God. He's a God. He created you. He created me. He, he had given mm -hmm. you life and he also gave us life and he will take our mm -hmm. life very soon. And then, mm -hmm. oh, I see God is, all, Allah is also a God, not a pig not a pig and then yeah of course not he's not a pig because pig is uh is associated with dirty animals that's why he's right. not a pig mm -hmm. yeah, so why why did he mention that god is not a pig as in i don't get it like what is the connection uh yeah because um as christian before we thought allah is something like a cow or a pig or oh, a they, oh. they doesn't eat pork. Okay, 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 okay. So, oh, okay, okay. Wonder. Okay. So basically, he is trying to say that Allah is a, a God and He is a Creator, so that mm -hmm. you know you also have this misunderstanding about Allah that Allah is a kind of an image or a deity. So you start thinking Allah could be something else. Okay. Yes. Yes. So what is that first point where it attracted the Islam attracted you? um islam has attracted me like the way of life like how you should treat people and how how god created the world how how allah created the world how it is said there how he created adam and how he create he, he created the create the creations like us and then um he it is said there that uh he doesn't need anything from us, but we need him. So we should do good things in order for us to earn Jannah. And because we are not sure about what's going to happen, uh, but it is already mm -hmm. written. Yeah, so like it says there, it's Kadar already. So he t my cousin told me maybe it's Kadar that... that you live here in our house so that you will become a muslim that's why i tried mm. to read quran i not not quran because he doesn't want me to touch quran because i'm not yet a muslim. because you are another you know why he did not allow you to touch the quran yeah uh, because he said i am not yet clean and yeah and because, no not yet not because you are not yet clean he, that is what he is lying because he is considering you as a najis yeah. you are filthy yeah because you are not a muslim because in surah 9 quran 9 verse 28 very clearly mentions that those who are unbelievers after this day uh, you know they they are filthy and do not let them into the masjid al haram so uh, that is in Surah 9, verse 28. Oh, believers, the idolaters are unclean. So basically, they are considering you as unclean. But they will not tell you on your face. They will say you are not yet ready. This is the deception yeah. of Islam. Okay. Um, and also, the one thing that he also lied, he said that uh, Islam teach you to, uh, to love others, right? Yes, yes. There is nothing love in the crowd. Yeah. 
that is again a, a big master lie why because in surah 9 verse 123 it clearly says oh believers fight the unbelievers around you and let them realize your firmness remember allah is with those who are pious and obedient to him basically islam is not peaceful it teach people to fight against others so you know that is also a lie so sister what made i know that you know you would have a lot of things to say about the whole change that has happened but uh, what was that first step like you know so did you go and take the shahada um after a year because i wanted to study something first before i get into that's why uh it happened to i happened to realize it because it's hard for me to i i am hurt if i if because knowing jesus is a god ever since i'm little i am hurt um admitting to myself that he is not a god that's why it's very hard for me to say um allah like that one it is very hard for me to accept that jesus is just a messiah or a prophet that's why uh, it takes a lot of time before i decided my uh, I, before i decided to le uh, to take a shahada and hmm. so it never it never came to your mind that maybe i should do more research on what is the real islam is not the islam that my cousin is saying but you know the real islam who is muhammad what was his life uh, it never came to your thought as such just I, asking i read i read a book a story of uh, Muhammad and then it says a lot of things about him the miracles that happened to him <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and a moon a splitting of the moon did you read splitting yeah. of the moon yes That's all lies. they're all lies my god see this is how the biggest of the lies the deception they do to uh, to non believers the people they don't know about the quran yeah go ahead now yeah see i i can i could understand that they will give you a small booklet they will never give you the bukhari the sahih bukhari or they will not give you sahih muslim or ibn maja or sunan abu dawood they will not give you those books they will give you a booklet which will say very highly about muhammad or all the you know praiseworthy things which are written which are all lies which are everything false but yeah sister go ahead yes and then after that after that i i i became pregnant and then went to went to hospital and then um the doctor said that i'm going to um they're going to need my husband needs to choose whether the baby or me because i am i, I am having trouble with preg pregnancy that time so i started complications to, in the pregnancy yeah, yeah. That's okay. why I said, um, I will call you Allah starting from now. Just save my baby. And then after that, um, like 24 hours, I think the doctor said, I don't need, uh, she, I don't need to, um, like, she doesn't need to remove the baby because my cervix were already closed. That's why, that's the mm -hmm. time I thought that maybe... God had answered my prayer, and uh, mm. that's why my cervix had closed because it's just an, an incident, first incident that happens on that hospital, that uh, mm -hmm. someone someone cervix uh, got closed within just twenty four hours. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. that's the time that I said to myself that I'm going to be a Muslim. Uh, so you actually thought that basically it would be Allah who helped you in terms of, you know, having your baby in the right position. So you you committed your life to Allah and basically follow Islam. Yes, yes. But um, it takes time because from 2014, I started um, I started wearing hijab for like 2018 or 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
did somebody told you about the background of hijab like what is hijab or where did it came from no no one <laughs> now you know the background should i tell you the background or you know the background can you, i don't know uh, it's just said there okay. that Maria uh, let me give you a, no no let, let me give you a, what they said what they yeah, said you were saying something sister um, Maryam is the is the model of of is a Muslim <laughs> woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, they, that's yes. What they so they they, they told you that they told you that Mary used to wear hijab and all the pious women used to wear hijab. So you should also wear hijab, right? Yes, uh, in order to protect like yourself from others also, so that they won't be deceived by your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Are you, you believe yeah. that uh, you're not gonna wear a hijab? They will rape you or they will do something to you. Do you believe that? Um, I heard that from from my other friends who came from from no. like. Do you believe that if you're not gonna wear a hijab, somebody gonna rape you anywhere in uh, America or anywhere in Europe? I mean, uh, Philippine or uh, Australia or anybody, any other countries? I, I believe that Afghanistan can happen. You know those kind of places might can be happen, but uh, you think can be happen in America? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe okay. Yeah, because they teach the teach the youngsters and teach the Muslim women that you know you are supposed to wear the hijab all the time because otherwise then you know you are not a good woman. You are like a you know, a very dirty woman or somebody who is not uh, in the, you know, the right position. But let me tell you, sister, this hijab has nothing to do with uh, a woman being pious or a woman being very modest. Hijab is basically a tool that is being used in Islam just so that they can control the women. And then, you know, they can if somebody is not wearing a hijab in a Muslim country, she is like a prostitute. She is like somebody who is a filthy person. And then it gives a license for a Muslim man so that a Muslim man can molest her. This hijab verse is actually from Quran chapter 33, verse 59. It says like this. It says like this. Oh, P oh Prophet. Tell your wife and your daughters and the women of the believers, draw their cloak all over their body that will be better that they should be known and not be molested so basically it's saying that you know they should wear this hijab otherwise they will be molested Najiba, can you screen share that please that uh... um i am using my i'm using my phone but let me let me just share it share it in the uh let me just share it in the in the chat Okay, just give me one moment. Let me just share it in the chat so that you can see. See, anything that I'm going to say to you, I am going to give you evidence. I will not speak anything without an evidence. If you, you can go yourself and check it in Quran chapter 33, verse 59, it gives you clearly what it means. This is the verse. Okay, here, it, here you can see. This is the verse that I'm going to post right now. And this, See, is, this uh, is the verse, okay? So, Glenn, that also is not uh, only face. The whole body they are talking about, not the face only. There's nothing yes. about the face. Yes, so it's not uh, a face. People, they try to cover their face and on the bottom, they don't do anything. But generally, they get beaten up. They yeah. get beaten up. If yes. you are only covering, if you are only just covering your head, you are you are making your face revealed, you are making your hands revealed, they will get lashes. They will get beaten up. This is what real Islam is that is being taught. And you know what is the background of it? The, the real background of this particular situation is very clear. The situation is that you know, Muhammad's wives used to go for toilet. Muhammad's wife would go to the toilet and then Muhammad's wife, uh, one of the wife in, uh, called Sauda, she used to go for toilet and with another, uh, with all the other women, you know, uh, the Muslim women, they, they all go together to toilet and uh, 
Sauda was Muhammad's wife. She was the tallest. So Muslim women used to go to Al Manasi for toilet. I will give you the reference for it, so that let me not say something without a reference. Okay. And tell me, sister, if they told you about this truth, did they ever tell you about this truth? This hadith, what he uh, tried to show you. The this hadith, hadith, yes. Yeah. I would have been really happy if I could have shown you in the screen, but I, it will take me a little bit more time. Or otherwise, brother, brother, uh, can you uh, open up your uh, open up your uh, screen? Tony, bhai, can you open up your screen? Sure. Just pull up screen. Just pull up screen, and I will tell you the reference. You can open it up. Yes, that's. Uh... Go to Sahih Bukhari, one forty-six. Sahih Al Bukhari, one forty-six. Yeah, I'm gonna share the screen. Hold on. Share the screen. Yeah. There was one uh, 67, we said uh, 147, is it Najin Bhai? Najin Bhai, hello? Najin Bhai, hello? Najin Bhai, we cannot hear you. We have a problem with Najin Bhai. Okay. 146. Okay, hold on. Yeah, that's why I'm just. 146. Yeah, that's one. Here you go. The wives of the prophet. Najibai, can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Najibai. Najibai, why are you muting it? Hello? Hello, Najibai? Okay. Anyway, this is uh, this is the hadith of uh, uh, Najibai was talking about. If everybody can see the screen, Sister Glenn, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the one which is he's talking about here. That the wife of Prophet uh, used to be Al Masai had uh, waist open. Tony Bai, isko bada kar do. Tony Bai, can you make it big? Can you make it big? Scroll and make it big. Okay. Control and scroll no, so no, that I'm it will not, become bigger. Just hold on one second. I'm trying to. No, I'm, okay. Can you hear that? Increase the size of increase the size of the image. Control and scroll so that it will become bigger. I'm trying that. Okay. Doing it. By that time, I will open up my system also. Okay, yeah, we can see that. Go ahead, Nadiwa. Yeah, so what I was saying is, let me read this. This is the background of why Muslim women are wearing this, this uh, disgusting uh, thing called hijab. The, the wives of the, this is Sahih al Bukhari 146 narrated Aisha. The wives of the Prophet used to go to Al Minasi at a vast open place near Baaki at Medina to answer the call of the nature at night. Umar used to say, now Umar is the Sahabi, the companion of Muhammad. He is like a disciple. He is the second most important disciple of Muhammad. Umar used to say to the Prophet, let your wife be veiled. But Allah's apostle did not do so. So Umar is the one who is bringing the Quranic words and saying, tell your wives to get veiled. One night, Sauda bin Zam, a wife of the Prophet, went out at Isha time and she was a tall lady. So there was a night where Sauda was going to toilet and, you know, she was a tall lady. And uh, Umar addressed her and said, I have recognized you, O Sauda. Think about this man's mentality. He is looking at a woman who went for toilet. And he is going behind this lady and calling her out and saying, I have recognized you, this lady. Najin Bhai, hello. Yeah, I think Najin Bhai has some problem. But anyway, this is a, a, a story about the hijab. 
and this is uh, the umar which is a very second uh, next to muhammad and he was telling his wife and he saw and he was laughing and you know making a fun oh i saw you i saw you when you going to the bathroom so the hijab came after that so uh, if people najim bhai unmute kare hello hello yes najim bhai okay so this is the background of the whole situation uh, sister glen do you understand it yes yes do you think that this is something which is yes or do you no. think this is basically you know imposed upon the muslim women just because they used to go to toilet and then muslim men are disturbing them these are not christian men or jewish men you see they are all their own people what is happening yeah this is a very next to muhammad it's his own people yeah this is the this is the closest person to muhammad that is umar who is disturbing sauda who is the wife of muhammad when she is going to toilet what does it has to do with piousness and then um, uh, tony bhai can you open up one more one more hadith sahih al bukhari 402 402 Okay, now while I'm talking, uh, try to open that. Can you please uh, uh, share more uh, testimony about uh, sister, so she can share more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. sister, sister, please go ahead. Please go ahead and tell us, like, what made you start having the doubt that Islam could be false? I know we are not going to take a lot of time. Our dear brother Basharat is also here. He is going to testify in Urdu and Hindi. but i will not take much of a time but what made you have a small doubt that islam could probably be false um when i talked to tony he told um he asked me a lot of things that i don't know yet and mm -hmm. it started me thinking that he he to like it struck my heart when he told me that you leave jesus just for this and mm -hmm. then i realized that i really love jesus Amen. i love i love him so much and it's hard mm -hmm. for me I, i um the feeling went back when when i uh, and then i started to cry but i didn't show it to tony i just i because i'm the person mm -hmm. who doesn't want anyone to saw me cry others to see crying yeah yeah i mm -hmm. don't like that and um the feeling came but but the love the love that was there inside in you for jesus that came out yes yes it i it went back and he keeps on asking me every time we talk uh, how are you praise said, god like, yeah i'm okay but deep inside i i have a guilty feeling that i left i left him and i abandoned him and i really mm -hmm. try I really tried to put him, put him on the other side, and just think about him to be a normal people. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't want to tell you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, one thing I want to tell you. She's the one actually uh, hold the house, and she make her husband and three kids to be converted to Islam. So she has a long way to uh, to bring it back this whole house. Go. uh in um, in the united um, in the united in christ but as is a lot of challenges she has and we all going to pray i will ask for everybody who are going to be wa going, watching right now who are going to watch that one please please keep pray for her and her family to bring more strong because see, this is again this is a this is a very big spiritual challenge for for anybody not only her or the people they have been muslim from uh, left that other a uh, club like a lack of catholicism or they don't know the lord so we have to pray especially for her and her family and uh, i believe she is in the right direction and we will ask for if she can uh, you know we can do a sinner prayer uh, nazim bhai you want to do a sinner prayer for her so we let her go and then um, yeah definitely she, definitely if she has any uh, yeah. question uh, sister glen um, and uh, ask her and if not so i know we are try to touch with her with the church and she's going to join the church very soon and we're going to pray for you and your family 
Yes, thank you. So yeah, much. definitely, Sister Glenn. Um, Sister Glenn, we are so happy that you are here. We are so happy that you have shared your testimony. Your testimony is going to impact a lot of people. In the coming days, we will have more sessions with you. If you are available, we want to have more sessions with you in Tony Bai's channel, in my channel, on in English. Uh, but before that, you know, you had you said that you have you you had that feeling of G, the love of Jesus, heart, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. And that uh, that when, uh, feeling of you know knowing Jesus that came back to you, right? Yeah, um, it feels like um, something something is something really changed inside me, and um, that's that uh, the part of me that came back, and I lost it for for so many years and then suddenly mm -hmm. I happen have it again and inside my heart I I really felt that I'm I think I'm complete I just don't have I just don't have uh, like what you call this time to speak that with my husband because we're really fighting yeah that, yeah, that when, sister, sister Glenn that everything gonna be okay I mean it's, it's not going that to take care of that yeah. It's gonna take time, but yeah. stay on your uh, strong faith, because, like I said, Jesus is the only way. There is no other way. Nothing. Not, I'm talking about Islam. There is no other way. That's the only way. Jesus, and He's coming yes. soon. And stay tuned up. And, Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna keep praying with you. We're gonna have a keep look uh, working with you, and God will bless you, and God will bless your family. Yeah, so yeah, we are just going to have a small sinner's prayer and then we are going to let you go, sister. You can go. Um, sister, can you repeat what I'm saying so that God would again rededicate your life in Jesus? Are you okay to repeat? Okay. Oh. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord uh, Jesus. You can repeat, sister. Only sister Glenn would be repeating it. Uh, none of us. Will. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me for leaving you. Forgive me for leaving you. I come back to you like a prodigal son who came back to his father. I came back. I come back to you like his prodigal son who came for, for his father. I, f I ask you for forgiveness of my sin that I left you. I ask you for the forgiveness of my sin that I have left you. I believe that you came to this world, died on the cross for my sins and rose up again. I believe that uh, I believe that you had that you had, died on the cross that you died on the cross. And rise up again. And you rose up again. I you believe that again. you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. And I will live my life for you if you will I give me this life. <laughs> I will live this life for you if you will give me this life. I will live this life for you and if you will give me this life. 